Hello, everyone, and welcome to Art for Art's Sake. This is episode 38, and we have Lee Chapman, a fine artist in various media, showing us some of the work that she does. She's going to read a book and show us her cards and the, talk about her inspirations and all sorts of things like that. I'm really excited to meet Lee and um, get to know her a little bit better with all of you. This has been a really great program to get to know our artists and our community, to stay connected to our community. And I want to thank everyone who's been showing up either live or after the fact um, to, to check out what we're up to and to meet some of the people, the great talent that we have in our community here. This has been, this is art for art's sake a new virtual program from the art from the St. Lawrence County Arts Council. And if you're an artist and you want to get involved, you want to do one of these videos, you can reach out to me directly. You can email me or message me on Facebook. Um, either way, I'd love to hear from you. So um, definitely reach out and we'll set up a time for you to do one of these videos. Also, I want to thank all of our, our previous sponsors for this program and on as a regular donor to the Arts Council. Thank you so much for supporting the Arts Council and keeping us going um, during the good times and the bad. We very much appreciate you. So if you want to make a donation and help support this program and others like it, go to slcartscouncil.org slash give today. Well, that's, that's all I have for y'all. So here's Lee Chapman and she's going to show you some of her stuff. How's it going, Lee? Hi, great. How are you, Maggie? I'm doing great. Take okay. it away. So I I'm showing you my uh, greeting cards that I got published through a grant with the Arts Council a few years ago. And I got started making cards for people when I was in the first grade. And my, <laughs> my parents bought all the supplies, the paper, and I made an individual Christmas card for every person on our list. And I mostly do florals and other nature organic scenes. So uh, this was a still life, but it still has a lot of the organic approach to it. And uh, this is a gladiola. Either way, uh, that was painted from life. And this was a sunflower. This one is actually three dimensional. It's printed, but it was made by sculpting individual petals out of paper and then painting them. But I got to know the sunflowers really well because I painted them live in a neighbor's garden. So these are my greeting cards and I have them you know, on my website and they're often used as note cards and letters. And I'm, I'm myself still keep connected with friends and family through handwriting notes especially these days, it keeps the connection going. Um, another work that I created was a, a book about my summers in the North Country. This is uh, my mom and my grandparents and uncle who have connections to the North Country. And I called it Over the River and Through the Woods because it was always about visiting our, our grandparents. But the cover is inspired by a a painting class that my mom and I took together because she's an artist too. And we started exhibiting when I was eight years old. We did county fairs together. This is my painting, but this is hers. So we took the same painting class and mine became the cover of this book. So I really got started because of the appreciation my family in the North Country showed me of, of arts and making great memories of family times together. So I'd like to read some of this book. This is another painting for the inlay that my mom painted first years ago and it hung in her kitchen, her parents' kitchen in the North Country for years. And then I repainted her version of it for the inside of my book. So like mother, like daughter. So over the river, and through the woods. Uh, this is actually a picture that my grandmother saved that I illustrated when I was very little. And here's a letter for her, from her, to say that she really thinks this is my calling. And that was encouragement from her. 
So this is a collection of my childhood memories of our family visits to Nickelville, New York, where my mother and uncle grew up and my father returned to. So during winter and spring holidays, we stayed at our grandparents' house and we summered at the farm, a farm house that my parents restored about a mile away. We shared quality time there during our childhood with cousins creating rich memories of our time together. The stories and pictures reflect the magic that each memory carries. You see the up close of the pine cone. So on our winter visits, we were welcomed by our grandparents with hot chocolate at the door. You see the steaming hot cocoa. And I illuminated every letter at the beginning of each page with um, gouache ink with a Ryko pen. And then most of the book is in water media with watercolor and some pen and ink overlay. So this is our house and the Christmas tree lights are glowing in the window. So everything in grandma's kitchen is blue, like her blue willow china. The room is filled with the aroma of freshly baked pies and you can hear the robins singing under the window in the spring. So this is where she would bake pies. And of course, we were tied to her apron strings and learned baking. And even in her kitchen, they had the old uh, water pump. So I'm so glad we got to experience all the seasons there. Grandpa built birdhouses in every garden. He even built a dollhouse down by the horse's pasture. My sisters and I played in it during the day and looked forward to riding the horse in the evening. As grandpa saddled up Smokey the horse, we fed him carrots that we picked from the garden. By the time the sun went down, everyone was smiling because all of the kids on Port Kent Road had a turn to ride Smokey. You hear the carrots from their garden? And we learned to feed the carrots with our palms open. There were the carrots and to hold very tightly to the carrot tops while pulling them up from the garden. <laughs> for Easter and 4th of July celebrations, all of the neighbors joined for parades down Port Kent Road. Everything was in walking distance. So we met people on the way to the post office and the general store. So on 4th of July, we always had the parades down the street and I think they had the 50, perhaps the 54th anniversary this year, or they will. It's a, a local tradition that as a child, I ha had to capture it in the book. And the parade usually starts in the middle of the street by the cutters and ends up at the post office. So from the general store, we took the beach bus to St. Regis Falls for swimming lessons in the summer. The best times were learning to swim to the raft or playing beach ball in the hot sun. At the Dynamo, the swimming lessons paid off when my brother and I rode down the rapids 
there was no turning back. Being out in the woods made us long for mom's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. See us rafting down the river. Sometimes we took the sandwiches when we went to the sand pit. Mine seemed to get full of sand before I ate it. Grandma told us that sand can help polish your teeth. So we ate lunch and went on pretending to dig for gold in the sand pit. Picking choke cherries for mom was just like digging for gold because the ripest ones made the best jelly. Mom made the jelly as we picked bouquets of black eyed Susans for the family, for the family parties at our summer porch. We called our summer house a farm and had many family gatherings there. All the kids would get together for some ping pong and card games. And we played until nightfall as the moon rose over the trees. Nighttime was the most mystical on clear nights, we could see the Big Dipper and dad helped us look for the man in the moon. We stayed up talking about the coming school year as we shared cookies and milk. We knew that summer it was almost over when the Malone Fair came to town. There was a Ferris wheel and horse shows, and we even saw twin calves being born. The candy apples and hot buttered potatoes hit the spot as we drove home, thinking of all the fun we had until next summer. Let's see that. So here's a map of all the places visited in the book. We got the choke cherry patch, and we have uh, learning to swim down at the falls. So as a grown up, I moved back to that small town and got to experience for the next generation what it was like to walk to the post office and hand mail a letter and get a cookie from the postmaster and have time to greet a friend. And the wind in the trees and the rain on the roof sound the same as they ever did. Oh, and then, so here's a picture. So that's my mom and I, Connie. You know, she's holding me in the farmhouse. And then this is us much later at a, an art show together. So. That is so lovely, Lee. And I love your illustrations in your book. They're just darling. Oh, thank you. It was my pleasure really to share them in the book form and then share my inspiration. And oh. uh, thank you for yeah. the chance to say hello. Absolutely. Well, are you in Nickelville now? Is that no, right? not, no, I'm, I'm teaching art in another part of New York, mm -hmm. but um, continuing to come back and 
I'm, you know, I still have my website where I sell the cards and where I give um, like online painting classes. But much of my inspiration to start the art and then even the, the opportunity through the Arts Council was what kept me in touch with the North Country. That's wonderful. And we did put a link to your website um, in the description on this post and in the event. So I hope everybody will go check out um, Lee's uh, website. Of course, my dog starts whining right now. <laughs> I hope everybody will go check that out. Thank you so much for sharing this beautiful work with us, Lee. It's so, so inspiring. It's just wonderful. Oh, well, my pleasure. Thank you. This has been Art for Art's Sake. Have a great day. See you all tomorrow.